The Sega Ages series has brought us some wonderful additions to the Switch library. Being able to play better than arcade perfect games with extra features and gameplay modes has been awesome, and there are still more games to come for us to enjoy. As the series wraps up its initial offerings, I firmly believe it's time for things to move on a bit, and we need some fresh new blood that Sega doesn't reissue quite as often. In this episode, we will be going over my most wanted games for the Sega Ages line of software. I tried to be realistic here and not include games that would be nearly impossible for Sega to get the licenses to, such as Jurassic Park or Star Wars. I also tried to look at the list from a standpoint of moving away from early arcade games and Sega Genesis releases, but not launching full bore into Model 3 and beyond. I wanted the list to sort of be the next step in the evolution of Sega Ages, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Sega loved to dabble into various genres quite a bit back in the day, and I always thought highly of 1992's Desert Breaker. It was developed on the System 18 arcade hardware by AM1, an overhead run-and-gun shoot-'em-up similar in style to Capcom's Commando line of games. Sega was wise enough to include an evasion mechanic that allows you to avoid enemy fire, and you need to use it often to get anywhere in this challenging experience. Like many Sega System 18 arcade games, there was no faithful home port of this on anything. Aside from the power-ups and two-player co-op you'd expect, Desert Breaker also is a good-looking and sounding game. Well-animated sprites and explosions often fill the screen, everything full of color that is often accompanied by great set pieces, such as vehicles, bridges, and mountainsides. All that visual goodness is backed up by a great list of music that hammers home the intensity of the on-screen action, sewing it all up into one hell of a great package. I feel it would need an easier set of difficulty options, however, as the arcade is absolutely insane even on the easiest setting. Being able to play this co-op across two Switch systems would be great, and I think a lot of people who have never experienced it would find more than enough here to justify its purchase. The history of 1988's Power Drift is an interesting one. It was developed by Yu Suzuki and his team at AM2, making use of the Sega Y arcade board. I'm sure most of you know this game well, Sega's first kart racer and as much a spectacle as it was a racing game. The multi-level tracks were short, fast, and chaotic, lending the game an intensity not often seen in other racers of the era. It was so different from what Sega was known to release around that time, and it showed off the Y board in epic fashion. It had the incredible smoothness you've come to expect from Sega's arcade games, but unlike games like OutRun, Power Drift had massive hills and even jumps baked into its crazy track layouts. While many of Sega's superscalers would come home to the Master System and Genesis over the years, Power Drift didn't get the actual Sega treatment until a Saturn Sega Ages release landed 10 years after it debuted in the arcade. The 3DS did a solid version of this in 2015, so I know the developers at M2 know what they're doing with it, and I think it'd make a fine addition to the Switch library. When I first saw 1991's Radmobile, it utterly blew me away. Developed on Sega's awesome System 32 arcade board by AM3, it was sort of a mix of OutRun and Power Drift, rally-style racing with checkpoints and other racers trying to impede you at every turn. There were great visual touches like weather effects and headlights that were orders of magnitude more impressive than anything we'd seen before it. There was even a rear-view mirror in place while all this other stuff was going on bringing the superscaler to new heights of realism. Unfortunately, Sega chose not to pay much attention to this one after its arcade release, 
and it would only appear once as the Sega Saturn game Gale Racer that was only released in Japan. That version was not arcade perfect, and it's high time we finally got one. The version of this Wii One is actually called Rad Rally, the multiplayer version of Radmobile that featured a twin cabinet in the arcade. Believe it or not, Streets of Rage wasn't the only beat-em-up Sega released in 1991. We also got AM2's Arabian Fight, a System 32 entry into the genre with massive scaling sprites, screen-filling magic attacks, and up to four-player simultaneous multiplayer. It really was unlike any beat-em-up you'd ever seen at that point, having more in common with games like Guardian Heroes that would appear years later. The story is of your typical Rescue the Princess variety, but the game excels based on its art and visual flair. The giant sprites are animated well, and each magic attack is accompanied by animated sequences showing the character casting them. This is yet another System 32 arcade game that has never been released on anything outside of the arcade, making it a prime target for something like Sega Ages. I think the four-player action and unique aesthetic of the world would certainly grab the attention of many retro fans and finally give this game the attention it deserves. Unlike many Western gamers back in the 1990s, I was a big fan of AM2's original Virtual Fighter. It had blown me away in the arcade and then again when I got it on my import Saturn in 1994. The problem is that there's never been a perfect home version of the original 1993 arcade game. We had the 32X and Saturn versions that weren't even close, and we had the PS2 special release that mimicked its visual style, but was a far different game. I'd love to see it in Sega Ages with perfect polygon counts and an arcade accurate frame rate. M2 has already shown they have fantastic command over Model 1 emulation thanks to the previously released Virtua Racing, so I know this is not only possible, but it may even be just as solid as that port was. Virtua Fighter inspired a great many visionaries upon its release, even planting the seed for systems like the PlayStation thanks to its incredible use of polygons in a fast, fluid, and easy-to-play manner that showed everyone that this was the future of the hobby whether you were ready for it or not. It deserves to finally come home intact for everyone to enjoy. One, ready, go! <laughs> With Sega's success with the first Sonic game, AM3 was then given the go-ahead to create a System 32 arcade version of the IP, giving life to the little-known 1993 release, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. This three-player co-op effort used an overhead perspective similar to Sonic 3D Blast, but controlled with a trackball to move your character around the playfield. This setup created a completely different feel from the previous games, made even more different by its obstacle course-like stage design that focuses heavily on surviving your area as opposed to fighting enemies. Along with Sonic was Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel, the first time we'd see either of these characters in the Sonic universe. The challenge of getting this one in Sega Ages is adapting the play mechanics down to analog-style control. I can tell you by trying to play this with a controller in MAME, it isn't easy, and there will need to be some big changes to make it work. This is likely the reason why the game has remained an arcade exclusive all these years. If M2 can crack the interface puzzle, I just know this one would be awesome to have on the go.
This next one is going to take a bit of work on both Sega's and Capcom's part to make happen, but the world needs to know about the System 32 racing game Slipstream. Released in 1995 in a few different South American regions in Mexico, this F1-style racing game looks and plays phenomenal. It was the kind of game that really showed off the power of the System 32, and took sprite scaling to a new level of depth and detail. Sadly, it's also been locked away in the arcade since it first launched, and because its distribution was so limited, few people know about it, and even less have actually played it. I think Sega branching out to include a release like this would be really positive for Sega Ages, as it still used their arcade hardware under license to Capcom. It would give us a taste of something Sega inspired, yet different from anything they had developed themselves. Sega's history is full of familiar IPs that get a lot of attention, and it really is time for those in the shadows to step forward and be given a fair share of the limelight. I know, I know, here we are again with me crying about wanting an Outrunners port on a home system, but this game is just begging for a Sega Ages release. It came out in the States in 1993 and just shocked the hell out of me with its incredible presentation and gameplay. But you've heard all this from me before, so instead of me praising it once again, let's just have a few minutes of glorious gameplay showing off this awesome game. There are a few games in Sega's back catalog that simply have no rhyme or reason for their lack of release on home consoles. Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder is perhaps the most vexing. This direct sequel to the original Golden Axe arcade game was released in 1992 and developed by Sega AM1 for the System 32 arcade board. Taking advantage of the power provided by this board, you get large, well-animated sprites, multi-path stages with forward-scrolling elements, and even four-player co-op. It was one of Sega's most profoundly improved additions to the beat-em-up genre, besting the original game in every single way. If you thought the full-screen magic attacks of Golden Axe were impressive, just wait until you see the screen-clearing power of these new characters. For too long has this awesome sequel been sidelined, forgotten and unavailable. The Sega Ages line would benefit heavily from such an addition and any extras like online multiplayer or extra characters would only sweeten the deal.
The various Sega Ages lines have covered many games from the arcade, Sega Genesis, Master System, and even the Sega Saturn. While many of these have been excellent additions to my library over the years, I'm ready for Sega to move the modern Sega Ages line on to the Model 2 arcade hardware. And in my opinion, there is no better place to start than with a proper port of the beloved Sega Rally Championship. Originally released in 1995 as a collaboration between Sega AM3 and AM4, this racing game needs little explanation as to why it's so good. Excellent design tracks with absolutely perfect gameplay nailed everything a racing game needed to be fun and easy to pick up and play. Its 60 frames per second visuals were show-stopping back then, and still look damn good today. This was released on the Saturn and PlayStation 2 in the past, with M2 actually doing that PS2 version themselves, so there is precedent here. If you could get an arcade perfect port combined with the extras in the Saturn home version, I think Sega would have an instant hit on their hands. The Model 2 era of Sega has been often represented by Daytona USA, but Sega Rally deserves to be there just as much. There are some issues with licenses in this one, particularly the cars from Toyota and Lancia. But other than that, Sega Ages is just begging for a game of this quality. Easy left. Easy right. Easy left. Check one. Hey, left. Medium right, maybe. Long easy left. Caution, hairpin right. Whatever game it is you want in the Sega Ages line, be sure to let Sega know. Whether it's social media, game polls, or just responding to videos like this, Sega has people out there listening to everything. With projects like Panzer Dragoon Remake, House of the Dead Remake, and Streets of Rage 4, it's clear they are trying to listen to the fans, at least on a few things. Your voice is louder than it's ever been in the history of gaming, and if you want something, you have to let Sega know about it. One other thing I'd like to point out is that Sega needs to take the Ages line multi-platform. Right now, the modern incarnation of Sega Ages is restricted to the Nintendo Switch, a great platform for these kinds of releases, but also one that excludes the millions of Sega fans that own PlayStation and Xbox platforms. The possibilities are endless if Sega would just open up these kinds of projects to everyone. After the Dreamcast was gone, Sega fans went in all sorts of directions to get their gaming fix. And the fact that many are incapable of supporting these games really strangles the potential of future releases. Broaden the games lineup, and broaden the user base, and you have a formula for Sega Ages success for years to come. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.